Hello again everybody, hope you're all doing good. So today we are going to be calculating exactly what size carburetor you need for your scooter's engine. Now don't worry if this looks a little bit complicated to you, it's actually incredibly simple. We'll go through it together in a minute. Most of these are just examples which again we will go through in a moment. Um, in a previous video I spoke about how different sized carburetors will affect your engine's performance i.e. smaller carburetors will give you better torque, larger carburetors better high end top speed, um, but if you go too small or too large it will negatively affect performance. Now that's obviously important to know, it's really useful to know, but even more useful to know is exactly what is too big and what is too small for your engine. Luckily there's quite an easy way of working this out. So what we have here is a little equation now you're going to need to know two things. The first thing you're going to need to know is the size of your engine in cubic centimetres. Now I would like to think that most of you know this uh, because especially if you're tuning an engine if you don't know what size the engine is you're really in trouble. So for example is it 50cc? Do you have a 70cc kit on it? Is it a 125cc? You get the idea. So that's the first bit of information we need. The second thing we need to know is what RPM that engine can rev to, um, because it's quite sort of important for the calculation. Now, I should say that there is a little bit of leniency in this calculation. It is possible to be very slightly out uh, in your initial inputs and still get the correct carb size. So what I mean by that is if, for example, you say your bike is 50cc and it's actually 49, it's not going to throw out the equation enough to make too much difference. Same with the RPM. If it's if you say it's 10,000 RPM max and it's actually 10,500, it's not going to throw it out hugely. But if you get these numbers wildly wrong, then obviously it is going to be out so you need to have as good idea as possible so you know as close as possible to your actual engine size and as close as possible to your actual rpms now as far as working out what your max rpms are if your scooter's totally stock obviously the information will be on the manufacturer's website if you have a uh, like a big bore kit or something like that on it, a lot of times the manufacturers like Polini and Molossi will have some specifications for those individual kits. So, for example, with Polini, uh, some of the road sport kits will be revving. I can't remember exactly, but something in the region of 10,000 RPM where their like racing cylinders will be revving up like 12, 13,000, maybe more. I don't know uh, without looking at the website, but um, you can usually get that information from them. Otherwise, you're just going to have to do a little bit of research and work out what um, your RPMs are. Another thing, if you're into porting cylinders and stuff like that and modifying the cylinders yourself, really the only way I can think of working out the max RPM would be dynoing it, but eh, it's better if you can, as I say, if you've got like a standard big bore kit or something and you can get the information from the manufacturer, that's great. Okay, so we've got those two things. We've got engine size and RPM. So this calculation, how it works... We take our engine size in cc's, we times it by the RPM divided by 1000. So what I mean by that, if your maximum RPM of your engine is 10,500, then you divide that by 1000, so you end up with 10.5. So you'll do, let's for example say 50 times 10.5 will give you A. You then take that and you find the square root of it, which will give you B, and then B times... 0.65 will give you your minimum carb size and B times 0.95 your maximum size. So let's just go down and have a look at this in an actual practical um, use. So here we have a 50cc uh, cylinder with a maximum RPM of 8000. So this would be like a, a standard 50cc scooter, de-restricted. Um, so we've got 50 times 8 because 8000 RPM gives us 400. Then we take the square of that, which gives us 20. So 20 times 0 0.65 gives us a minimum of 13 millimetres. And then times 0 0.95 gives us a maximum of 19 millimetres. So now what we've got, we've got a minimum sized carburetor required for this scooter to run at that RPM. And we've got a maximum size. 
So now what we can do, depending on what we want out of the scooter, we can choose our carburetor. If we're interested in all out top speed and not too much about the initial low down power, we pick the 19 millimeter because that will give us the most top end, but with a slightly reduced bottom end. If we wanted more torque, more bottom end power, we choose the 13 millimeter, which would have slightly less top end power, but the best possible low end power. And if we want the best of both worlds, so basically a balance, we choose something in the middle, something around about 15 or 16 millimeters. Now, this actually makes sense because, for example, I've got a 50cc behind me here, which stock had a 16 millimeter carburetor, and quite a few of them have, for example, 17.5s, things like that. Some of them have 12s, but that is. Um, in that instance, the 12 millimeter is actually too small. It's actually um, a restriction. Uh, so sometimes they'll have a smaller carburetor to restrict them, or sometimes they'll have the proper size carburetor and just have like a restrictor ring or something, or some restriction in the airbox to, to restrict the power of the 50cc engine to whatever the legal limits are. But this, as I say, these figures are based on a de-restricted engine. So again, if we move down, we've got, okay, here's a 50cc at 10,000 RPM. So this is a bit more tuned. Uh, so again, we do the calculation again. We find that the minimum carb size to run at 10,000 RPM with the same, same engine size is 14.5 and the maximum is 21.2. So when you get a lot of people talking about running 21 millimeter carburetors on a standard 50 cc cylinder, that might sound a bit big, but it is actually correct. It just means that they will be running around 10,000 RPM and they will be running at, um, they'll be concerned with having the best possible top end and not really caring too much about the low end pull. Uh, so again, if we go to 50 cc at 12,000 RPM, this is like, you know, we're proper racing mode now minimum is going to be basically nigh on 16 millimeters and your maximum is going to be 23.2 give or take so let's have a look at another example this is our 70 kit so what we have here is a 70 cc cylinder kit uh, probably something like a Molossi sport or a, a Polini sport like the road going sport cylinders this RPM is, is just for an example. The actual RPM, like I said before, you will have to look up. But let's say, for example, it runs at 10,000 RPM. So we do the same calculation again. Gives us 26.45. So again, we times by 0.65 and find that the minimum carburetor size we need for a 70 kit of uh, this RPM is 17.1 and the maximum size is 25.1 so you know again with 70 kits people going for around about 21 millimeters they're actually somewhere in the middle the sort of 19 21 millimeter um carburetors are in the middle which is giving them a fairly good um balance uh performance basically so just to show that this calculation does in fact work and isn't just me making stuff up what i actually have here is the specifications for a gy6 125cc four-stroke engine like you would find in most chinese scooters now they produce their power at around 7000 rpm now the oem carb size the carburetor size that is fitted from the factory is 24 millimeters so let's do our calculation we've got 125cc times 7 7000 rpm gives us 875 square that gives us 29.58 if we times that by 0.65 we get a minimum carb size of 19.2 and a maximum carb size of uh, 29.1 so if we then look at our 24 that sits nigh on bang in the middle which gives it the best possible balance which is why the car um, why the manufacturers chose that carb size for that engine but for example if you have this engine and you wanted to have slightly better torque you might consider dropping down to a 19 or if you wanted better oh, top end you might consider going up to well it's 29.1 is what the calculation is saying you would still be safe going up to a 30 millimeter that as i say there is a tiny bit of wiggle room in some of these numbers but this is just to give you an accurate an idea as possible as to what the maximum and minimum your engine requires is something like a 24 26 millimeter carburetor is basically perfect a 30 millimeter carburetor is going to be your absolute maximum and a 19 millimeter carburetor is going to be your absolute minimum but there you go that that gives you the idea and as i say once you've done these calculations for your engine so your engine's cc times its max rpm 
and you've got these two numbers, you've got your minimum and your maximum, you can then decide what you want. You can decide, do I mostly ride my bike around town? Do I want it to have a really strong pulling away power? Then you probably want to go for the slightly smaller size. Uh, whereas if you're basically taking it to a track and you want to go max speed and have like the best top end but don't care too much about the acceleration being a tiny bit slower then you go for the maximum size carb and if you want the best of both worlds you go somewhere in the middle for a balance so you know let's say for example pretty typical 70 cc at 10,000 rpm yeah you're probably going to go about 19 to 21 millimeter if you've got a um, you know a, a sports 50 cc kit then like like the polini 50 cc kits for example at 10,000 RPM. As I say, if you want a balance, you probably want to go somewhere around the 18 to 19 again on that as well. So you can see how this is really quite helpful to give you a base to jump off of effectively. You're still going to have to obviously go through all the faff of get the jetting right and stuff like that, but at least you don't have to go out and buy different carburetors and try them to see which one's actually going to work. You can use this calculation to work out exactly what size carburetor is going to fit you best. And then you can tune that carburetor to perform as, uh, as good as it can. So there you go. Hopefully this wasn't too complicated. Hopefully this is helpful to some of you guys out there. I certainly find it very helpful when I'm tuning bikes and things like that. I don't know, I should say, I don't know how well this works with larger capacity machines. And certainly once you get to multi-cylinder machines, it probably works just fine if, for example, you have like a four-cylinder bike and if you work this out, because this is like just for an individual cylinder. So if you work this out for one individual cylinder, it will give you the carb size for each of them if you're going to run four carbs on a four cylinder engine but once you start getting into like two carbs for four cylinders or one carb or something like that i don't know how well this works i'm not amazing at maths to be fair um i just know that this works really well for certainly single cylinder engines certainly smaller capacity engines so there you go hopefully uh, it helps some of you guys out if you did enjoy this video and it did help you please do give it a like if you haven't already go subscribe to my channel go check out my other videos where i explain various aspects of tuning and how engines work and things like that and for now i'll catch you again soon